Hi, I'm Gordon Raquel from Filmmaker U. At Filmmaker U, we create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can learn more at filmmakeru.com and check us out on Twitter at filmmaker underscore you. Every week, we interview a film professional to discuss their work. This week, I'm joined by Kevin Kraut, whose work includes Billions, Fosse Verdon, Invasion, Wormwood, uh, and many, many other great films as a Daily's colorist. Uh, welcome to the show, Kevin. Oh, thank you for having me. This is great. So I guess my first question, we have a lot of young uh, people who want to get into the film industry uh, on this show, and we're wondering, uh, how would you describe your role as a Daily's colorist? Because a lot will hear of the colorist, but they won't hear of this, this role. Uh, well, uh, a Daily's colorist is, um, you know, I guess you could say job is to uh, provide a um, a clean and um, a clean and a clean handshake visually uh, between uh, production and fi and finishing. Mm -hmm. um, I guess uh, I hope that answers your question. Sorry, Mike. Yeah, no problem. I don't, I don't I don't do this often, so this is this is uh, so uh, I, yeah. Um, so how would you, uh, like, how do you describe, like, how do you build a working relationship then with the cinematographer uh, to make sure that you get the colors and everything correct for them and what they desire, but also prepped for post? So uh, how it usually starts is, um, at least on the harbor end, since I've, since I've been here, is a, uh, a, a, a production will come up where the uh, DP will work with uh, one of the finishing colorists and they'll come up with a, uh, a working show light that will be used um, on set for viewing, as well as for my job as a colorist to uh, color time. Uh, so um, our job as a daily's colorist is to make sure that visually um, everything lines up from production to finishing. But there are also some, um, you know, there are also not mitigating factors that happen in between where, you know, a uh, shot needs to change a look like, um, you know, mid shoot. Um, and in that case, that's where I would come in. I would um, get, a, get notes from either uh, the DP or the DIT. Quick little notes that say, hey, listen, can you just pull this, pull this back or can we try something different here? Uh, that happens often. And um, if that happens, I usually talk to the you know, finishing colorist as well to let them know that you know, the look is kind of changing here and what you think. And then if they have any feedback, they can reach back to the DP as well to give their feedback. So everything goes in a circle. Well, it sounds like it's a lot of uh, communication and making sure everyone's on the same page. Um, so when you're working, like I noticed that you worked on The Punisher and yes. all the other um, um, Marvel shows on Netflix and the shows are dark. And I don't mean that in like, they're too dark. I mean, like just the, the, the tone, like the aesthetic in the look is dark. So were there any issues that you had to tackle with that to make sure that the <laughs> editor and colors could see it in the end? Or like, how did that work out for you guys? That's funny. I was thinking about talking about, you know, Daredevil and the Marvel block, uh, uh, the Marvel Netflix block, because it was such a uh, such a fun process to uh, to work with, work with Tony D'Amour and, uh, and at uh, Encore. I think he's at Picture mm -hmm. uh, Picture Shop now. He's an amazing colorist and uh, working with, uh, you know, the DPs on those shows like Matt Lloyd and Martin Elgren and Manuel Billiter. Those were, guys were amazing to work with. And I remember when I first started that show, the LUT was, the, you know, the LUT in combination with the shooting was, was very low. Mm -hmm. So um, I remember, and it was, a very, it was a very fun and challenging process to, you know, to pull out whatever I could in, the little sliver of uh, detail that I had, and um, and those shows were dark to begin with, um, but uh, but it was it was a lot of fun to to play around with that and try to like pull out as much as I could, you know, to help uh, Tony out uh, mm -hmm. on the finishing end. That was that was that was a really invigorating show. So you mentioned about you know that's fun. What is it that uh, excites you? when you're going to work? What is it about the role that you're, you're excited about daily? 
Well, you have to, you have to, you have to love it because our hours are uh, not very ideal in terms of like a normal living schedule. We work at night. Um, I just came off of a uh, ship that ended at about five, five o'clock this morning. So, you know, you really do have to love it. Uh, what I love about it is it gives me the opportunity to work with work, um, not only with color, but a, a, to have a shorthand with production. I love, you know, the production side of things. And I like what being a dailies colorist and being a, you know, a pipeline manager affords me the opportunity to stay, you know, in contact with the production at the beginning. I don't, I don't think there's anything better than being able to get a piece of footage in at first and being the first one to see it, you know, and being able to work on it. That's exciting to me. Um, yeah. I sorry. have to ask. Yeah. How do you do it when if you're going throughout the night <laughs> to like five? Because uh, I remember when I started, I'm like, I'm gonna work on set. And then I worked like a couple of nights and I was like, you know what, this is a terrible <laughs> <laughs> experience uh you definitely uh you, you definitely have to pick your battles in a way um and uh really be open to it i have i i love filmmaking and i love movies and i love watching movies and and helping you know and if i'm a small cog in the wheel at night you know that's very exciting to me to be in part of the process that's mm -hmm that keeps me up at night, you know, and then keeps me, uh, keeps me invigorated, you know, you know, it, yeah, you, I mean, it is tough. I mean, you have to uh, kind of, uh, you know, acclimate your body and your mind. And sometimes those things don't align uh, every day. But, hmm. you know, if you're doing what you love, then it doesn't really matter, you know, you still enjoy it. That's, that's where I'm coming from. So how did you get into this, this role then? Uh, well, I started out in assistant uh, as an assistant editor, and then um, I didn't even know color existed. You know, I, I, I mean, I knew that um, you know there was color on film, and you would watch a movie, and it's in color or it's in black and white. But at a certain point, I started to notice while I was working on like um, in-house ad agency, you know, footage, I would notice like certain things would you know, a certain color would change. And I would ask the editor, I'm like, why is it changing so much? I say, well, well, there's a, you know, you know, tell us any colorist who's manipulating the image. I honestly didn't know that really existed. You know, I didn't go to film school. I went to school for uh, journalism and broadcasting. So that was way out of my wheelhouse. I still loved the, the side of filmmaking and I always wanted to be a part of it. Um, but I didn't know that you could actually manipulate an image, you know, so minutely to like, you know, present a certain feel. And I found that to be fascinating. And so I quit my job due to being an assistant editor and I decided to work in telecine. I worked at Technicolor at first and I was in the machine room, you know, throwing up film on a, on a, on a spirit and, um, assisting uh assisting the dailies colors there and i really got a feel for it and i really loved it and that was already working on the overnight you know so i just kind of got embedded with it and uh, i enjoyed it enough to uh to stay with it and i still enjoy it now what do you think like what like i said we have a lot of young people watching this so what are some of the challenges that you face on a day-to-day -day basis that they might not be aware of Right, right now, like currently. Um, well, in, in, as a job, like what, what are some of the things they might not be aware of? Well, um, part, of, part of our job is, at night is to make sure that, you know, the information, you know, not just image, but information is getting passed from production to editorial and in that sense to finishing. Um, uh, elements such as, you know, CDL information, all the boring stuff, you know, CDL information, scene and take, making sure that everything passes over so that when either a visual effects gets a hold of it or, you know, finishing, they have all of the information at their, at their disposal. And one of the biggest jobs is making sure that all of that's um, getting passed over correctly. Um, the visual aspect of it is very important, but if you don't have the information 
the uh, the metadata passing over to editorial and finishing, then your work is pretty much blown away. You have to make sure that things are going over correctly. And that's, you know, a big part of the job that some, uh, that I guess somebody coming into this in initially wouldn't realize, you know, how much, how much minutia is involved in making sure that the image is still looking good. Now you've worked on, so you've worked on a lot of great shows. Two shows that I'm frustrated don't exist anymore is Why the Last Man and uh, Tick. Yeah, those now, are fun. <laughs> what, so what made them so fun? What was it that? Well, I mean, uh, I think um, I think Why the Last Man we were working on. Um, uh, I don't think we worked on the uh, the main production that you see on TV. There was a uh, there, there was an initial shoot that happened that uh, we worked on initially. Um, that was, oh, that was, all, that was a one-off. That was a pilot. Um, I don't think, believe it aired. Um, yeah, I so I can't really stay. I can't really uh, attest to working on the one that actually aired, which was really good, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> did a really great job. Um, and then what was the other one? I can't remember. The tick. Oh, the tick. Yeah, the tick was a lot of fun. Tick was Tick was great. Um, yeah. What what well, made it so much fun? What was it about? The oh, it was. I mean, uh, I think um, I believe Wally Fister shot the first episode, and uh, and then I and then uh, um, I'm, the name of the DP is escaping me right now. I got I have to remember uh, who it was, but uh, that was a very colorful show. It was very colorful mm -hmm. and 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 really fun and. Yeah, that was a that that was a lot of fun for us here. Wow, and then um, so when you're like, is there a show or a movie? Because where I was going with that question originally was, is there a show or a movie that you've worked on that you're like, I wish more people have seen this because it was a lot of fun and it was something that I, I'm really proud of. Wormwood, Wormwood, so good. Worm, uh, yeah, the Errol Morris documentary. I I wish that most people would dive into that uh that uh netflix documentary because i mean it's it's just beautiful it's it's such a beautifully shot um beautifully shot docu docudrama yeah. um and it has uh, yeah i remember being like i remember really being bummed out that not many people saw it it's kind of like under the radar you really have to dig into netflix to find that but if yeah. but Joe's work, uh, Joe Goller's work is so so great, and the cinematography is just amazing. It feels like a like a nine hour movie, you know, mm -hmm. that you're watching, and it's such a great story. That was that was a that was a big one that I worked on. That you know, I was really uh, I was really hoping more people would see. In Wormwood, they like, if I remember correctly, because it's been a while since I've seen it, but like, you know, like it looks like they set up shots and then, you know, put in stuff like uh, shots of the television and then put stuff in inside mm -hmm. the television so when you're getting things like effects and stuff where they might green screen the tell you know put the green screen inside the television how do you tackle prepping that for post because you know the editor is going to want to take out the green screen and then eventually the vfx or the uh, colorist is also going to want to do that so how do you deal with that when you have a lot if i have a lot of green screen um it those are actually the easiest <laughs> uh, on my end, on my end, at least um, I can just make sure that, you know, the tone is um, tone is uh, neutralized and, and, um, and passed uh, and, you know, passed along, uh, you know, in a neutralized form. I um on those days, like during dailies, I'm like, yes, it's, it's, it's great. It's great. It's gonna be easy. But sometimes they can throw you a curveball. But uh, you know those are those are fun to do too. Um, they can be, uh, but uh, but really with uh, with with VFX and like green screen, you're just making sure that you know making sure that everything outside of the green doesn't look too green. Like I know I fight a lot with uh, green bounce, you know, yeah. off the faces, and you know if the if the, there's like a, a highlight, you know, on someone's face that's like right here, you know, that can be really difficult. Um, and uh, yeah, the, yeah. You must be looking forward to virtual production, kind of, because then you get rid of the green, the uh, green spill. But 
now you don't get to relax. <laughs> true, true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I, I should I should preface that by saying, you know, uh, I'm being facetious about, mm. you know, like, oh yeah, green screen. You know, it's going to be an easy night. But I mean, <laughs> green screen is also the most boring, I guess, because yeah. you know nothing much is going on around it. It's just you know the same thing over and over and over again. Uh, but um, but I'm I'm like a, the uh, all the color work outside of that, you know, like a, like in exteriors and like interiors, like really well lit sets. Those are the most fun to actually really dig uh, dig into. Oh yeah. Now I have one last question for you that I ask everyone. We've been stuck in the pandemic for over a year now, going on two years, mm. and a lot of people have turned to streaming networks for entertainment. Is there a show or a movie you've discovered over the last year that people should check out? You know, I'm I'm pretty basic. I, to, to be honest, you know, during the pandemic, I didn't really, I haven't really watched that as much as you think. I have two kids, so it's oh, it's a constant rotation of everything <laughs> you could possibly think of that you don't want to watch. Okay. Uh, but um, most recently, I mean, I I you know, not only you know, uh, you know, in the home or like in the theater. I love Dune, man. I love, oh, yeah. uh, I loved it. I I know that. You know, that's like a cliche answer, like, yeah, go see Dune. You know, it's not really a, uh, um, you know, like a rogue title, but I really enjoyed that. I was, uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, that was, that was pretty fantastic. And um, I forget what else to... Well, it's great that they got the sequel, Greenlit. Oh, yeah. It would have been terrible. If they... <laughs> really, I was really happy about that. Yeah, yeah I was really, uh, really happy about that. Um, now, have you seen Bluey else. for your kids? Have you seen the oh, show Bluey? Bluey? Oh, that oh, show gosh. is fantastic. Uh, yeah, okay, there you go. That's a show. That's a show that, you know, even if you don't have kids, if you do have kids, <laughs> Bluey is the, is the best, was the best show on TV for us last year. For oh sure. my gosh. Like, I would watch it without my daughter. <laughs> Same, man. I mean, it has so much pathos and yeah. you know, visually it's just beautiful. And like, you know, the, the way they... T- I'm gonna wax poetic about Bluey right now. The uh, like I remember like oh, you know the handstand episode. The fact that it was like mostly a oneer, you know, and the, yeah. like all this stuff is going on around, and, and you don't see that on children's television at all, yeah. you know. And uh, that was yeah, that show is fantastic. Great. I'm glad that gr- glad <laughs> that I found one that was like you know that we can both like kind of bond with. <laughs> well, and I loved um, I just love the dad's sense of humor where it's just oh. like it's just so great like he's um oh there was one recently i watched where she they're like that's not fair and he's like no that's pretty much <laughs> that's how the world is and they're like yeah. what yeah like, no that's the, as far as it can get i um i i have to commend those parents because they are on like 24 hours like you know the the scene where he he's like just laying on the ground and the kids are about to get into bed and the mom's like uh, abandoned and he's like yep i'm up and it's like <laughs> they're on 24 hours and i'm like how how do i compete with this because my kids watch this every day and they're like yeah. all right let's play keepy uppy and like xylophone and I'm like wow okay yeah <laughs> keeping up with that yeah, yeah my my uh i was listening to a podcast and they were like it makes me want to be a better parent but it also makes me feel like i can never achieve that status <laughs> none of us will be able to achieve what they achieve it's yeah. uh you, you know you do a little bit each day yeah. yeah well thank you so much for letting me interview you today absolutely and, and that's it for this week everyone uh make sure to check out filmmakeru.com for all our latest courses and of course follow us on twitter at filmmaker underscore you I'm Gordon Burkell. Thanks for watching.